concert I went to. It was 1978. Day on the Green, number three. Van Halen opened the show. They were out with their first record. And everybody's like, ah, oh, did you see the guy with the green and white striped pants? And this guitar guy was just wailing and stuff. And I just remember ACDC coming on next going, who in the hell is this? Man, what a great band. And then uh, Pat Travers was third. And then Foreigner. It was a Monday, a day like any other day. I left a small town. Oh man, it was great. And then Aerosmith came out. 78. In their prime of the toxic twins and all this stuff. And man, I thought it was the greatest thing, but a lot of people, even including my brother, was like, when Aerosmith owes me 14 bucks or whatever it costs for the day on a green back then, 78. And uh, I thought it was great, man. I'm just seeing Steven Tyler and all them guys up there. And, and so it was a great experience. And so, of course, we went home to Georgetown and then drove 19 miles over to Auburn across the canyon and bought every eight-track tape that ACDC had available, which was like two or three. This is the first we ever heard of him in 78. And he had some great stuff. Still, one of my very biggest inspirations was Bon Scott. Jeans and tennis shoes, no shirt. Get that mic and rock it. And I love that. You know, That's why he's one of my biggest inspirations. And uh, of course, Steven Tyler and people like that, because it was my first concert. All that stuff really was instilled in me. And I can still remember like it's yesterday, man. And, uh, that's the kind of stuff that still I like to listen to. Aerosmith, bootleg, all this kind of stuff. One of my all-time favorite bands is Fog Hat. Always will be. As a matter of fact, when people ask me, what are you listening to? Like last week, I go, Fog Hat. You know, early ZZ Top. Just all that good stuff, man. Like, I'm stuck in the 70s, 60s and 70s. When I was two years old, we moved from Texarkana, Arkansas, where I was born. Oh, yeah. And then we moved to Georgetown, California, and my dad played in a band in the corner of the the bar, the saloon at the Georgetown Hotel. He played, you know, guitar with his twin amp, amp reverb, what amp or whatever. And then uh, Dwayne Schrader was on piano and Banjo Bob was on banjo. And so I used to just move the sand that's on a shuffleboard off and then lay on the hardwood so I didn't have to go over to the room we lived to across the hallway. And uh, so that started right from the beginning of my eyes opening and stuff. My dad was in a band. And uh, then once I went to Oklahoma, graduated high school, came back, bought a book to learn how to play chords because we would have campfires in Georgetown population, 900 and something, it still is. And we would get to play our favorite Beatles song, you know, Rolling Stones song or whatever. And uh, so I got a book that taught me the chords. Next you know, we got a little living room band, me and my brother, a couple guys. And next you know, uh, uh, these two girls that used to live in Georgetown lived in Sacramento. And they knew Frank and Brian and said, hey, their singers quit tonight. They don't even know it. They're playing the Rock Factory. If you make it down to Sacramento, we'll get you an audition. I did. And thank goodness I shared the mic with Frank because I knew nothing about microphones. I was holding it two feet away. It was whistling and Dixie and all this stuff. But I came over to share the mic with Frank on, Your love is driving me crazy. And Frank heard that. Otherwise, I was, I was dead meat, man. So, thank you, Frank. And, uh, the rest is history. Now I'm in the band and City Kid and next thing you know we're playing clubs and we found a club, the Oasis Ballroom and the owner Dave Dittman let us throw our own songs into the top 40 because that's all that was allowed. And uh, then we started going to LA to showcase. And we would come back to the drawing board in Sacramento. Everybody else would stay down there, move down there, dress like it, walk like them, talk like them. 
write songs like them and we'd come back to Sacramento and come to the drawing board and try to say where's our song we put it between Van Halen and Ernie James Dio and go what's missing in ours which is quite a bit which we learned to develop and develop but we stayed in Sacramento and therefore is why Nikki Six in a loving joking way says hey when somebody asks them who's Tesla because we went on tour with them in 1990 when we made that's when we ended up making the Five Man Acoustic Jam. But he said, Tesla is a bunch of tomato farmers from Sacramento. And we were like, yeah. <laughs> we were proud to be tomato farmers from Sacramento. But a lot of our friends are like, man, that ain't cool. Just like whenever we come out with the second album, Love Song, and it made the top 10, and Casey Kasem comes on the TV, and we're all watching. I can remember like it's yesterday, Casey Kasem goes, well this week, coming in at number seven, or it could be eight, because Science made seven or eight, or Love Song made seven or eight, one or the other, those are only two top ten singles. But he said, coming in uh, at number seven is a band of nobodies out of nowhere, with Love Song. We were like, all right, Casey Kasem, man, said our name. But our friends were like, man, that ain't cool. Man, he caught you guys a bunch of nobodies out of nowhere. We said, well, we are. We're a bunch of tomato farmers from Sacramento, right? 